Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and this is the 38 Airflow Tanker. It's very odd. It's very different from almost anything I've ever, re ever reviewed or driven or looked at in SnowRunner, and I've got to say, when it comes to bringing a bringing a certain type of uniqueness and creativity to the SnowRunner modding community, the creator behind this rig is definitely one of the best in terms of, again, like, nobody else would have made this, is the thing. It's so different and so unique and so crazy. I mean, look at this, even the standard configuration. Look at the taillights and, like, the upper taillights and the lower taillights and the bodywork and the fenders and just the way the thing looks is so different from everything else that we've seen so far. Let's see if we've got an interior. Oh, we kind of do. Big old steering wheel, big old bench seat, and that's about all you get. But let's fire it up and take it into the garage and see what it's all about. So it fires up pretty quick. It almost, it almost feels like it's got a modern day engine swap in a way. Now, once you get it into the garage, it definitely, again, I don't know if it fully looks like it's you know, kind of at home yet, but I, I'm, I'm trying to, like, get used to this, you know, like, classic style being in a, like, a SnowRunner context. It's very interesting to see. So, we've got a default block, upgrade block one, and upgrade block two. Now, these both bump you from A plus to S plus. However, this one uses more fuel, so I'm assuming that it's probably even faster and even more powerful. Now, we've got, for gearboxes, balanced, High range, off-road, and special off-road. I'm going to start with the special off-road and see how that goes. And then we've got stock suspension, which is probably mostly designed for towing because of the, the amount of lift it's got in the rear. And then we've got raised, which is probably pretty stiff. And then we got tuned custom, which is a little bit lower, but it probably flexes better. I'm not completely sure, actually. So it seems like we start with 51s. Yeah, 51 is going to be your starting size. But at the same time, I don't know if you can go any bigger than that. So I'm in the off-road category now. And, I mean, I see a lot of tires I recognize, like the ANK uh, wheels and tires. But you can go down to a 47. But why would you want to do that? Like, I really... Oh, there we go. Or if you want to go up a size, you could go up to a 54-inch set of Tega tires, which do look really good on this thing. But I actually think the tractor tires, the tractor tires look so incredibly just, they look right at home. And not only do they look right at home, but I think at the same time, they look, they look almost like they belong there. And that's very, very, very odd. But like, I don't know why it is that they look like they belong there, but they do. Oh, I love how he designed the snorkel to work with the truck. That's really cool. Hey, you could do a log carrier setup on it. That's so cool. Flatbed setup, van body, which definitely fits right in, service body, sideboard bed, fuel tank, which the tuned custom suspension is not made for that, portable garage with 800 repair points, four spare wheels, and 740 units of fuel, and we've also got saddle high and saddle low if you want to tow, um, tow trailers. So I think actually what I might do is see how this thing does as a logging truck. That would be super interesting to see. So you could put running boards on the side, we've got the default bumper, and then we've got whatever wheels coincide with the tires we chose. For example, right here we have MSH rims 1, 2, and 3. I actually think that 3 works best with this truck. You have a few different color options, like, for example, the standard red, bright green, sort of a dark blue, and then a brown, kind of like an off-brown, um, fully blacked out, and then you have gray, and then you also have a lighter blue, and then you have the orange that we have right now. Now... I'm kind of down for the red, but I'm also kind of down for the orange. The orange is just, like, super unique. Now, there isn't any interior customization right now, but that could potentially be added in the future. Now, let's fire it up and see what this thing is capable of as a logging truck. Now, in terms of console stuff, I'm not quite sure if this thing is going to make it to consoles, but at the same time, I see no reason why it wouldn't because it doesn't have any logos on it. You know what I mean? It doesn't have any logos on it. It doesn't really have any brand identification on it. So I don't really see any reason why it couldn't make its way to consoles. But at the same time, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Now, let's throw some lumber on the back of this thing. Long logs. And when you do that, actually, I feel like I really should be running a different suspension. Ultimate, default. Wow, okay. 
So it's just going to weigh down on it one way or another. So high is actually going to be the best way to even it out. Yeah, high is going to be the best way to even it out. Now, it is a diff lock and all-wheel drive always-on truck, so no worries about getting stuck or having to constantly be switching. Let's see if the lights work. Yeah, they work. I didn't expect them to not work, but I was going to be... I, I was just curious as to how bright they actually were. And what's cool about them is the fact that they're not actually, like, all that bright. But, that, but at the same time, that kind of works because trucks from this era did not have bright headlights. They were not like the modern day, you know, light bars and LED pods that we see today that can literally light up nearly what feels like half a mile in front of the vehicle. So it's kind of one of those things where it is sort of period correct. So let's make our way into the river. Throw it into high. Wow, that, that top engine... That top engine puts in some work. Holy smokes. Yeah, that puts in some real proper work. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea, but I'm doing it anyway. Okay, yeah, that's a really bad idea. Don't do that. Or at least I wouldn't recommend. You can do it if you want to, but it, 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 don't blame me if it doesn't go very well. All right, let's make our way to the mud and see how it does in the mud. Fully loaded down with a uh, with long logs, like just fully loaded ready to go let's see how it does plunging it into the mud easy come on come on come on come on come on come on not bad not bad at all that's really really good actually like that's on a level that i did not expect to see at all look at this this is the first mud lane it's still trying to chug along now i will say to be fair it did not really want to do it in high but that's understandable. I mean, I don't think I don't think there's really many trucks at all that would want to do that section in high in the mud, fully loaded down with lumber. I, I really just don't think that there's gonna be a lot of trucks out there that could do that. So the fact that it got as far as it did is tremendous in itself. Now, jumping into the next mud pit, it's still maintaining a good pace in low, albeit not quite as fast as it was before, but it still feels very sure of itself. It doesn't feel like it's going to sink. It doesn't feel like it's just going to start spinning and strand you. It feels like, really? Wow. Bumped in on a controller on that one. All right. That was my bad. I will not blame that on the controller. That was my bad. But anyways, moving on, this thing in the mud very very good as long as you're willing to keep it in low range it is solid super solid even when it's got like a lot of weight behind it super solid i say that i say that and then we get to the edge right here and it starts to get a little unsure of itself really i trusted you i believed in you dude oh my god and you had to go and really you had to go and make me look like a blithering idiot didn't you eventually it will make its way out there it is there it is i just had to be really really careful and then the second that front axle started to grab i threw it into low and was just like yep powering down so will it do it yes will it do it quickly not particularly but again you know even with the top engine it really doesn't have to do it quickly. I mean, I, the, the reason why I would want the top engine in this thing, especially if I was going to use it in objective-based gameplay, is if I was going to be kind of running around on main roads a lot, and then, you know, once I got into the, into the off-road areas, I would keep it in low and just use the torque. So now on to the dips obstacle. Let's see how you do through here. Now, I could potentially leave it in automatic for this, but I don't really want it gear hunting all over the place. Because sometimes the programming can do that. Easy. Making it through the dips obstacle with a load of lumber is a big deal. So if it has to winch a couple of times, that's that's not a bad thing. I will never, I will never, you know, talk badly about this thing for that. And you know, I think I'm gonna go ahead and actually pull it. Go go ahead and pull it out of there. No! Oh man! Oh, that's, that's no good. Oh, that's sad. Okay, all right. Well, I guess truck to the rescue. Let's see. Hold on. It's never an issue to bring a truck out here to rescue it. I'm just always like, 
Just, it's always one of those things where it's like, oh, I really didn't want that to happen. But, you know, it happens sometimes, and it's all right. So we'll actually bring a, uh, we'll bring a Paystar out here to do it. I'm sure this guy can rescue it. Not only that, not only that, but Log Crane, and we could probably reload that thing. All right. Now let's back it up. Diff lock on, all wheels on. There you go. It actually retained most of the lumber, which is pretty impressive. And when I say retained, it, it retained half of, it retained all of one log and half of the other two, which I'll just kind of load them back into the truck and it'll be fine. But yeah, that's ouch. All right, crane mode, let's go. Completely accidentally uh, put the crane in the wrong place back there, but don't worry about it. It's fine. Rotate, rotate, rotate. You know, I said, I, I said open. Oh, there you go. Now, now you want to open. Okay. Up you go. Drop it. All right, good. And then we'll grab the other one. If we can reach it, which we should be able to. Oh my god, the camera is literally like... Is like internally just not having a good time. Rotate it all. Oh my god, I think it's that... I think it's that tower right next to us. Beautiful. All right. Cool. That was like the smoothest uh, crane usage I think I've ever had. All right. Swap back over to this guy. And I'll just ease him out of there. Straighten up the truck. That should be packable. Yeah, she's good to go. And she is off to the bridge jump. Now, as you guys know, when one attempts the bridge jump, one must have the high-range gearbox because one must go for full speed and full distance when attempting the bridge jump. And this is going to be no different because we are now running the 8-speed. The 8-speed really just will not hold back in any way, shape, or form. There is no holding back for the 8-speed. There's no holding back at all. And I think that at the end of the day, my prediction is... We will probably go over the barrels with at least the front axle of the truck. Maybe not the rear axle and definitely not the trailer. But my prediction is at the very least the front axle makes it over the uh, over the barrels. But it feels quick. I mean, this is sixth gear. I'm going to put it in high for the hill climb because I know for a fact it is going to want to put itself back down into like second gear. And that is the last thing we need. All right, up the access ramp. And after the crest, back into automatic. There's sixth. There's seventh. Oh my god, go in a straight line. Go in a straight. Whoa! Dude! The entire thing, the entire setup almost cleared the barrels. Like, the entire truck did, and the trailer almost did. That's a lot further than I initially predicted. But if you guys enjoyed this look at this truck, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. It definitely was one that surprised me. And if you're new around here and would like to see more, make sure you subscribe and turn those notifications on. And I'll see you guys next time.